Hi, my name is Sam Proctor with the USC Service Department, and today we will be looking at the bin site automation for U-Treat version 3.05.05. .05. So once you get all your panels turned on and the panel gets booted up, then this is the screen you're going to be looking at here, which is the main splash screen. You can touch anywhere to get yourself to the main bin site screen. So this screen might look a little different if you have a way hopper instead of a tri-flow. As you can see here, we have the tri-flow for this example. So the only thing that will be different is the picture of the tri-flow would be a picture of a way hopper and you wouldn't see the inlet diverter draft size or the three separate weights. Other than that, should be basically the same. Up top, we have the date and time, which does adjust itself for daylight savings time. So you shouldn't have to mess with anything there. Off to the right, we have the active outlet path. Right now we have auto treat selected. Down below that, we have the indicator lights for the conveyors we have tied to the system, which is a scale fill, underbin, and transfer conveyor. These are just indicator lights. They're not actual buttons. They're just letting you know whether the conveyors are on or off. Off on the far left hand side here, we have the bin. Uh, lets you know which bin is selected what product we have selected for it, which is soybeans. If we had the soybeans set up, we would also see the variety, lot number, the correct seeds per pound, and also the inventory. Off just to the right of that is our flow rate and travel time. These get automatically set by the automation once you start pulling product in. Down below that, we have the total accumulated weight for the run and the final batch weight for the run. Just below that we have the inlet diverter, lets you know whether the inlet diverter is on or off. This is the device that diverts the seed to each hopper as you're running. Off to the right of that is the treater diverter position, so it lets you know what position it is in if you have one enabled on your system. It's either going to say treat or bypass. Down below that we have the picture of the tri-flow, the three triangles up top are actually the position of the inlet diverter. Normally you would see one of those green at all times, whether it be one, two, or three, depending on which hopper the inlet diverter is over. I am not currently connected up to a tri-flow, so that's why they're all showing red. Down below that, the three circles. Normally these are red, not green. Uh, they only go green once the high limit switch is tripped, which is what those are for. There is a high limit switch for each individual hopper to make sure that nothing overflows out of the hopper up top. Normally it's red, like I said, and once the switch is tripped then it would turn green and you would also get alarm saying that that specific way hopper's limit switch is tripped. The three triangles below are for the way hopper discharge gates, letting you know whether they are open or closed. So red would be closed, green would be open. There's also a gate indicator on the bin, again just letting you know whether that bin gate outside is open or closed. Off to the right of the tri-flow picture we have the draft size. That is always set to 700 pounds. Uh, that's just the amount of weight that we're trying to get into each hopper before it diverts to the next one. And then down below that you can watch the gain and loss in weight as the triflow hoppers are filling and dumping. Down below that we have the current customer that is selected. We don't have any customers set up that's why it's blank. Down in the bottom right we have the target weight so how much weight you're wanting to pull in from that specific bin you have selected. To actually set up a run so to type in your target weight select your outlet path and all that stuff for each run, you would click on the startup button down at the bottom. From here you can select your customer name from the list that you have created, select which bin you want to pull from, how much weight you want to bring in, you can call it in by pounds or if you want to call it in by units you can select SCU and type in how many units you want. As long as you have the correct seeds per pound entered in for that product then it will do the math correctly and then select your seed outlet path which in here we have auto treat, manual treat, and auto bypass. Uh, they may look a little different depending on how your site is set up 
but with this one this would all this would be all that we would need so auto treat would be automatically starting the bensite and treater together manual treat would be separating the system into bensite and treater automation and then auto bypass would only run the bensite side and flip the diverter to bypass and not run the treater so now we're going to go ahead and exit out of there Next thing we're going to look about look at is the HOA screen. This is where you can come and turn on any of the Bensite components in hand and also put them all into auto for the system to turn it on or off during the automation run. 99% of the time everything in here is going to just sit in auto and wait for the automation to tell it what to do. But you can run your conveyors up here in hand if you need to track a belt um, or running the underbin in reverse um, at the end of the year for clean out. Down below here we have the inlet diverter and the three air gates for the tri-flow. We can spin the inlet diverter manually by putting it in hand and pressing and hold the index button. Uh, normally it would display what hopper it's currently over, but since we're not actually hooked up to one that's why it's reading zero. Off to the right hand side here we have our bin slide gates, um, just letting you know whether they are open or closed. If you're not in an automated run you can open and close them manually by pressing and holding uh, one of the buttons for two seconds. Otherwise they'll just stay in the closed position and the automation will open them when they need to. Down below here we have the treater diverter and as you can see there are some hash marks on the buttons not allowing me to press them. Uh, this is because when we set up our outlet paths, the diverter are tied, or the diverter is tied to that specific outlet path, and so it will move it to whatever position it needs to for that outlet path. So we have auto treat selected. That means the diverter would always need to be in the treat position, so that's why it is green on the treat. Um, this makes it to where you can't accidentally or accidentally put it into bypass or put it into bypass to clean something out and forget to put it back. Um, if you needed to move the diverter manually, then that would be a situation where you could select manual treat. Uh, that allows any automated component to be ran in manual when it's locked out like this. Now we can go ahead and exit out of that screen. Next thing we're going to look at is the alarm screen down below. So this is the screen that's going to pop up whenever you have an alarm in the middle of a run. Uh, the screen is going to pop up and the buzzer is also going to be going off. So the first thing you'll want to do is hit that silence button down at the bottom. That way it shuts the buzzer off and then it will turn that flashing red active alarm to a silenced active alarm. So it will go yellow instead of red. It still means you have an issue that needs to be addressed. Once you have the issue figured out and get it fixed, then you can hit the reset button down there at the bottom right. This will reset them to a solid green, non-active state, and as long as the alarm doesn't pop back up or it doesn't, or if it stays red, it means you still have an issue, but as long as it goes solid green, then the issue has been fixed and you can continue the run from there. Once they are, once all the alarms are green, you can hit this clear non-active button down towards the bottom left. This will get rid of all of those non-active alarms to clean up this alarm screen so you're not having to scroll through a bunch of active in uh, non-active alarms. This doesn't delete the alarms because if you hit uh, or if you notice down at the bottom I actually have 35 total entries for alarms. You can hit this view all button. This allows me to see every alarm that has popped up since I have turned on the system. They're all solid green so that means they are all non-active alarms. And then you can hit hide all to get rid of those. Now we're going to go ahead and exit out of the alarm screen. Next thing we're going to look at is the utility screen. So in here, the only thing that's in here are the shutdown timers for the conveyors. These should already be set up. You can add time onto them if you feel like you need to, but there shouldn't be any need to once the system is set up correctly. Um, and by having them staggered like this in time, it will actually shut off the conveyors in sequence from whatever bin you're pulling from to the weigh device. Down below we're going to look at the report screen. So
So on the left hand side would be all of the reports that have saved, which if you notice here, it can save up to 10,000 reports. Um, and you would access bin site and treater reports from here. So if you're always running the treater with the TriFlow, then you have about 5,000 of each report that can be saved uh, without deleting. Um, tells you how many records you have um, saved. Tells you which records you're viewing. So I'm viewing one of eight, one through eight, uh, and I'm selected on record one. You can also jump to a specific record. So if you have a bunch saved, you can skip to a certain one if you needed to reprint it or just check uh, the numbers and compare them to the ticket that was printed. Off to the right here, this is all the information that gets saved for each report. So up top it would tell you what kind of record it is. This is kind of a fake um, Bensight report that we're looking at here. Uh, it gives you the date and time that it happened if the system paused or not, what measurement mode we're in, so either US or metric, the customer name that was selected, which if you happen to select the wrong customer, you can click on this gray box and it will bring up your customer list and you can select the correct one and resave and reprint, just in case you happen to forget to change the customer name when you uh, started the run up. That is the only thing that can be edited in this portion though. Uh, down below that is all the seed information, so the, the product name, the variety, lot number, seeds per pound, seeds per unit, all that good stuff. Down below there, it shows you what bin you pulled from, how much weight you wanted, what that is in units, how much weight the system gave you, and what that is in units. If this was a treater report, instead of the weight information, it would actually have all of your chemical information, so how how many ounces you applied of that specific chemical for that run. Down below here, the print button, you can reprint your reports. On the view full record details, the only extra stuff that you're getting with this is, so for a customer name, uh, you can actually save an address and a phone number if you so choose, uh, which it will display all of that information, as well as giving you a start and an end time instead of just the start time. We can also add notes to certain reports. That way if you have a certain alarm that happened and that's the reason why the like your weights were off, you can notate that for your records later on so you don't look back at that report and say, why was this one off so much? If you put a little note in there, then you know, oh, okay, that's right. We had a drum drive alarm during that and so we had to terminate the run and that's why we wanted 300 units but only got 100. So once you enter something in, so if I was going to add something onto this, um, just add a one to it. As you notice down here at the bottom, the save button is flashing. That just lets you know that something within this has been changed. And so to save the changes, you actually need to hit the save button. Once it goes solid green again, then you're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of the report screen now. We're going to look at customer editing. Very similar layout to the report screen. We can save up to 500 customers. So what you would do is you would select an unused one and then type in the name, address, and phone number. The barcoding is only for prescriptive treating customers, so if you're not a prescriptive treating customer, then just ignore the barcodes. Once you have that information in there, then we would need to save it. So if we click here, and we'll make a little test one. So we've changed the name, so it's flashing at us. We hit save, and now we have a test record, or a test customer name saved. You can also clear everything that's on here by hitting that clear button. It will erase all the information for that, for that entry and then you can save it and it would be blank again. So now we're going to go ahead and exit out of there. Next thing we're going to look at is the product editing. Again, very similar layout. So we have all the products that we can edit up to 300. 
and then the information that we're editing here on the right. So we can name it, type in its variety, its lot number, seeds per pound, seeds per unit, and then the cup to pocket ratio is the number that we adjust when we do a seed wheel calibration. So basically we're saying however many of those 10 cups will fit into one pocket of the seed wheel. So for soybeans, usually we start that out at about 2.5, and then you can do your calibrations after that. And your calibration screen is right here, and it is specific per product. So you would just click on your seed wheel calibration, type in your actual weight, your totalizer weight, and you hit apply. So we'll say that we actually got 2,500. That's what our weight ticket said. But the treater totalizer said that we got... 2575. Now remember, our cup to pocket ratio before was 2.5. Once we hit apply, it's going to change that to a 2.43. So it updates that number so the next time that you run that product through the seed wheel, it's going to be more accurate so you're going to be more accurate with your chemical application. Up here we have a little help button. Just gives you a little information. On this one, it's how to calibrate seed. Um, there will be multiple of these little help screens um, on certain areas, just in case you forget how to do something. Um, usually, these little guys will be really helpful in that situation. So now we'll go ahead and exit out of the product editing screen. And we're going to click on this question mark button down here. This gets you to our help screen, which has a lot of really good information. I'm not going to go through all of it, but if you get some time on your system, it would very it would be very beneficial for you to go through it because it does have a lot of really good information, especially in the alarm section. If you have an alarm in the middle of when you're running and you're trying to get a hold of somebody and you can't get a hold of anybody at USC or your dealer to try and help you figure out the problem, sometimes you can come in here and go to whatever kind of system alarm it was. So if it was a triflow alarm, and it gives you uh, common triflow alarms that we see and you click on one of them it gives you possible causes for the alarm and possible solutions to fix it so you might be able to get yourself up and going a little quicker than having to continually call back in to get help. Now we're going to go ahead and exit out of there. We're going to look at the about button down on the bottom right now what this does is it displays your software version so what version of U-Treat you're currently running which like I said in the beginning we're looking at version 3.05.05 .05, which was released on October 27th of 2016 about the only time you'll really need to get into this screen is to uh, if you call in to USC or to your dealer and they want to know what software version you're running uh, because if it's an issue that we've heard of quite a few times with a certain version it might require a software update to fix the issue. Go ahead and exit out of there and then we're going to go into the security screen. So on here uh, your username is always going to be operator and your password is just USC hit enter, logs you in, so then you have two options, log out or tools and options. So we're going to go into tools and options. Up here we have our editing screens that we've looked at, as well as the recipe editing, which would be your chemical recipe. Down below those we have our print setup screen. This lets you pick whether you are auto printing reports. It also allows you to put your company information up top that way it will print that information on every ticket that goes out. Um, it's kind of up to you if you want it to or not. Uh, it's not a requirement, but it does help out in case your customer loses uh, your contact info. Um, they can look at their reports if they have any issues with anything. Um, and then you can also pick how many copies of the report that we will be printing. So we'll go ahead and exit out of here. Date and time, like I said, will automatically adjust itself for daylight savings time, so you shouldn't have to mess with that. USC Instant Messenger. Uh, this works hand-in-hand -hand with our Uconnect Pro, and it comes in 
very handy when you have a building that blocks the reception of your cell phone. Um, so if you have to go outside to get reception, this would be a very good tool for you to use. Once you get your Uconnect Pro hooked up and we are able to log into your system, uh, we can actually use this uh, instant messenger to chat back and forth. That way you're not having to call in while you're outside and then go back inside to try a certain fix. Um, you can just chat back and forth on the screen. Exit out of there. Import export list there at the bottom. So you can actually plug a USB stick into your system. It has to be 8 gigs or less um, and has to be formatted to FAT32. But once that is done, you can save off all of your alarms, your reports, customers, seed profiles, bin profiles, conveyor profiles, all the information that we save into the system, um, which we highly recommend just in case something happens and you have to replace your PLC, which is where all this information is housed. Um, if we brick a PLC or if it gets struck by lightning, there's no way for us to get this information off. But if you have a backup copy of all this, uh, we can just load it right back onto the system. This is also where you can delete alarms and delete reports. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of there. Standard metric, um, it should be set up for your area, uh, but in case it's not, um, this is where you would come in here to select either standard or metric. Last thing we're going to look at is the bin editing screen. So off to the left is all the bins that we have for the system. For this example, we're just showing four. Um, and then off to the right is all of the information. So you can name the bin whatever you would like, um, select your product type. So once you create those products in the product editing screen with the specific variety lot number, seeds per pound, and all that stuff, you can just select the product here and it uses all that information that you've already pre-saved. And then like I said in the beginning, the flow rate and travel time automatically calculate themselves once you start bringing product in. So you don't necessarily have to type anything in there. Um, it will put the correct numbers in there that it needs. Uh, the gate time adjustment and the gate auto calibrate, that is a tool for us to be able to tweak the calibration in case you have a specific bin that is uh, consistently say 20 to 30 pounds plus or minus. Um, it will kind of let us fine tune that a little bit. Um, if you think you need to use it, um, be sure to give either the techs at USC a call or your dealer a call to see if that's kind of what we want to look at. They may have a couple other suggestions that we need to check before doing that. Um, but that is what those are for. The, then down at the very bottom, we have the inventory so we can add an inventory to each bin and it does have a running total so after every run that gets weighed it automatically deducts that amount of weight from that bin so once you get down pretty close to empty you can actually check to see how much inventory you have left in that bin and that is Utreat version 3.5.5 the bin site side of the automation thank you for watching